Hi, I'm Brian Rogers Jr., commercial photographer and digital artist, and today I'm going to show you how to light a bottle with a single light. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to create a small set for this bottle. So as you can see, I've got my Sony a7R2 camera set up in position, and then I've got a couple of sawhorses that are going to be kind of the foundation of where we're going to place the product. So right here we've got a 2x2 two two board. Any board will do as long as it's a nice flat surface, and basically this is going to be our tabletop. The next piece that we need is a black piece of plexiglass, and uh, these are about $20 or less on Amazon. This is a 2x2 two two sheet and usually they come two-sided so you'll peel it off um, and basically once one side gets pretty scratched up you can uh, reuse the other side. Alright, so the next thing we need is a light stand, some kind of clamp like an A-clamp, you can get these at any hardware store, and a piece of foam core and these are actually pretty common at most big box stores or art supply stores as well. And basically what we're going to do is we're going to create a little background here. So I'm just going to place this in the center Okay, so this is our product today. Uh, we've got some pie-eyed spirits, mystical shine apple pie. So this is a liqueur. And uh, one thing that's important to note when you're shooting product photography is to keep it as clean as you can. Most of the time I wear gloves on set when I'm doing this kind of stuff. Um, but I'm not really too worried about this bottle because I've been handling it on the bottom and right on the top here. So you're not going to see fingerprints very well. I'm using Capture One to tether so I can see a live view of my shot and that's really helpful. So if you're away from your computer, you can actually take a look at it and kind of see what it looks like from the camera's point of view. But one thing I like to do is instead of physically moving the product, I like to actually move the plexiglass. One thing to note is it's very important when you're shooting product photography to make the most of your sensor in your camera. And to do that, you really want to fill the frame with the product. In this case, I'm using a 24 to 105 Canon lens with a Metabones adapter on the A7R2. And right now I'm currently at 105, so I'm zoomed all the way in so I can fill the frame with that product shot. One important thing to note is that when you're shooting product photography, you don't want to leave autofocus turned on. You don't want the focus to shift every time you take a new shot. Another important thing to note is, even though we're shooting at f14 right now, we're going to get sharper focus here than we are on the neck of this bottle. So what we're going to do first is we're going to light this area and then as we build all the shots that we need, we'll come back and switch focus and then we'll focus on the top of the bottle and shoot that. So I just took a test shot and it's totally black. That's exactly what we want. We want to make sure that none of the ambient light in the room is affecting the shot. We want all of the lighting to be coming from the light that we're actually using to light the bottle. Okay, so I've got a studio strobe here. This is the Profoto B1. It doesn't matter what strobe you're using. If you're using a speed light, that's completely fine. If you're using Pulse Buff, whatever brand you like, they all are going to do the same thing. What is important is how you modify the light. And you may notice that I have a grid um, attached to this strobe. And what that's going to do is it's going to give us a nice um, feathered light and it's going to be really focused. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you what this shot would look like without a grid and then with a grid. So I'm going to go ahead and take this off and we're going to just take a test shot. Now as far as power setting goes on the strobe, I have no idea what our exposure needs to be. I'm going to hand hold this, so I'm really going to use my eyes and make a judgment call based on that. So right now this is at 5.8 power and we're just going to take a shot and see what it looks like. And I'm just hand holding this strobe overhead. And I'm going to go ahead and grab the grid and we're going to see what that looks like. Again, I'm holding the strobe overhead. Now we've got a grid on. What the grid is allowing me to do is it's allowing me to kill some of the light on the background and focus the light more on the label and also feather it on the edges. So I'm going to go ahead and fire some more shots. And as I'm doing this, I'm going to move the light around just a little bit. Each shot is going to be different. Now again, what we're doing is we're trying to make the label look really good. So you may notice that there's a hard reflection in the glass. That doesn't really matter because, uh, again, we're just shooting for the label. So all this is going to be pieced together in Photoshop. If you look at advertising images of bottles, they, have, they always have that nice glow. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to take a test shot and I'm going to put this strobe with the grid right behind the bottle. I'm going to put the angle at kind of a downward angle just to make sure that we don't get any flare in the shot. All right, so we've just taken the test shot and I'm noticing that because the light source is a little bit wider than the bottle, we're having some um, light bleed over the edges. 
and I really want to minimize that. So in order to do that, a nice little studio tip is that you can take some gaff tape, which most people have um, in studios. It's very affordable if you don't. But what you can do is you can take some gaff tape and you can just kind of cut the light down just a little bit. And what that will help us do is minimize that flare. Now I'm going to do the same thing that we were doing earlier. I'm going to take another test shot. I'm lighting the bottle from behind to get that nice glow. Okay, as we can see here, it minimized that flare coming off the side of the bottle and that's exactly what we're looking to do. So we want some nice clean shots. And I'm gonna start at the bottom and I'm just gonna work my way up slowly to make sure that I cover the whole bottle. And again, that grid is helping us confine the light. Overall, I think the shots are looking pretty good. As we get to the top of the bottle, you may notice that there's a little bit of flare at the top. I'm gonna to actually shoot up from the bottom and see what that does for us. I'm gonna go ahead and do another pass of exactly what I just did, but at a higher power setting, just to give us a little bit more light through there. Now again, the neck is a little tricky, so what I have to do is I have to angle my light upward just a little bit to light that neck. So we're gonna go ahead and move on to the next step, which is creating a really nice edge light. And to do that, what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna use this foam core to our advantage. We're gonna get a nice big soft box, and if you don't own a soft box, you can easily use a scrim. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna place it right behind the foam core and it's going to basically create two strip boxes on each side of the bottle. So what I'm looking for here is I'm just looking to create even size lights on each side. So what we're looking to achieve with this uh, makeshift strip box look is we're looking to get some really nice edges on the sides of this bottle. What we may end up doing is we may end up flipping it in post to make sure that they're exactly perfect but I want to see what this looks like on set. Um, making this look as even as possible and I'm just trying to create some contrast so everything is going to be really dark with the exception of these nice sharp white edges that we're going to get from this modifier. So I left the power on the strobe at the same exact setting as we had it when we were lighting it from behind. It might be a little overexposed, it might be a little underexposed, I don't know yet. So we're going to take a test shot and see what that looks like. So I'm going to go ahead and fire this off. And it looks like we got a pretty nice edge light, but I think it could be a little bit brighter. So I'm gonna turn up the power on the strobe. Now that we've got the exposures out of the way that we need to build the bottom half of the shot, I'm going to switch focus and make sure that I've got really sharp focus on the top of the bottle. Because we have this seal on the top of the bottle, the exposure is gonna be a little bit darker. So what I wanna do is I wanna give myself a variety of frames to work with, so I'm gonna Obviously keep the setting that I have right now, it's at eight and a half. I'm gonna boost that up a little bit and just capture a variety of exposures. So if I want a brighter one in post-production, I have that available to me. Now you may wonder why I'm adjusting the flash power settings and not the settings on the camera. The reason is if I switch my f-stop on my camera, it's gonna change the depth of field and I don't want to do that. I'm also not changing my ISO because I always want to shoot at 100 ISO when I'm in the studio. Okay, so we're almost done with this shot. The next thing we need to do is we need to take the softbox back off, add the grid back on, and then what we're going to do is we're going to move around the set just a little bit and we're going to light different areas of the top of the bottle. That way we've got some options in post-production. Now one thing you may notice is that I'm using a modeling light. What that allows me to do is it just allows me to, to visually see kind of where that light is falling on the product. It's really helpful. If you have a speed light, unfortunately they don't have that feature. You could still work around it, but having a strobe on set is definitely a good thing to have. So what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to create some separation between the black background and the top of this bottle. So by moving the light around, what we're doing essentially is creating shape and form on the top of the bottle. And depending on where that light falls, it's gonna look completely different. If I shoot from camera position, it's gonna look really flat. So I find that overhead looks pretty good. So you may have wondered why I didn't place a light over here or over there to create more of a front edge highlight. 
Um, I could have done that and it would have looked nice, but I find that doing it in post-production gives me a little bit more flexibility as to where that reflection falls and I just like the look of it personally. So we've got all the shots that we need to put together this composite image. Let's go to the computer and take a look at the images. All right guys, so we just got back from the studio and now we've got our images into Lightroom and we're gonna begin post-processing. All right, so the first step in creating a product shot is you wanna process your raw files. And we have Lightroom open. This is what I like to process my raw files in. And I've already selected the shots that we're gonna to use to build the, the composite image. So I'm gonna go through those kind of one at a time so I can show you what we did on set. Now, the first image is for the label. So you'll notice that we have a couple of different exposures. One's a little brighter, one's a little darker. The next set is basically just backlighting the bottle. And uh, what we, what we're gonna do in Photoshop is we're gonna blend all these together. So these are the range of exposures that I grabbed. Um, this is the first set, and then I went ahead and did another set too, just to see what it would look like. Um, this one I believe was a little bit brighter. The next setup was for the uh, edge lighting. And then the one right after that was edge lighting, um, and it was more focused on the neck of the bottle. So this is where we switched focus in the studio. And again, I did that because when you're shooting the bottle, the neck is actually out of focus when you're putting focus on the label. Basically, we shifted our focus and then we shot some exposures of just the neck. So as I go through here, you'll see the other shots that we've selected. And they all look a little bit different because I moved the light around. And they all have kind of a, a different look and We'll just, you know, we'll, we'll take a look in Photoshop and see kind of how I put that together. Okay, so as far as processing the files go, I didn't do a whole lot. I did pretty much your basic corrections that you would normally do. Um, one of the biggest things that I really had to make an adjustment to was uh, the transform panel. And I just rotated it a little bit because I thought that all of the shots could have been just a little bit straighter. Other than that, uh, in the basic tab, I added a little bit of clarity. I added some sharpening. I made sure that I had lens correction turned on. And then also the camera calibration, I changed to camera standard and that helped me basically just achieve better color. And the only other thing that I did was going back to the edge lights, I bumped up the contrast just a little bit because I thought it was um, a little flat. I just wanted to bring out that uh, contrast a little bit more. So I just brought the whites up and the blacks down a little bit. Other than that, that's pretty much all the processing that I did. So that said, we'll go ahead and jump in Photoshop and we'll take a look at the file. Okay, so we're in Photoshop and the first frame that I brought in was the edge light. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn that layer on just so you can see what it looks like. And right underneath that, I created an adjustment layer and just filled it with black. And that's ultimately what our background is going to be. So even though we shot it on black, I wanna make sure that it's pure black. And the only way to do that is to make an adjustment layer and fill it with black. So right after the edge light, we jump into the glow. And basically, these are all of the exposures that I shot when I started from the bottom of the bottle and worked my way up. I pretty much merged those all together um, I brought all the layers together in Photoshop and then I changed the blend mode to lighten. And what that allows the shot to do is it'll blend all of the light layers together and it'll take all the dark stuff out. So it only reveals the light. Once I did that, I made a merged layer and I brought it over into our working document. And then again, I also changed the blend mode to lighten. Now I'll go ahead and change it to normal just so you can see what that shot looked like. And I'm gonna go ahead and turn the mask off. Now, when I turn the mask off, you'll see that it's got a really nice glow. It's pretty evenly lit. And I just wanted to control that a little bit more. I want to see those edge lights show through. So again, by changing the blend mode to lighten, you're gonna see those edge lights kind of pop out. And that's exactly what I wanted. So by adding a layer mask and just kind of brushing that in, it lets me fine tune where that glow is gonna come through and it really helps shape the bottle a little bit. So you can see that there's quite a bit of difference between um, 
just a regular version with you know the normal blend mode and then switching it over to lighten and adding that layer mask. Now I did two passes on this just to see what it would look like. So here's the second glow option and I thought it was just a little too bright and I didn't like it as much. So I went ahead and processed it anyway just because you never know but ultimately I ended up deciding to go with the first glow. Okay so the next set of layers that we brought in were all for the label. And I'm going to go ahead and show you the first label layer with the mask turned off. So this is what our shot looked like. Um, overall, I think it looks pretty good. And again, when I'm looking at this, I'm not looking at the bottle. I know the bottle doesn't look good. I'm lighting this for the label. So again, product photography is lit in just different parts and then pieced together. So that's kind of what's happening here. Now, you'll see when I add the mask what that looks like. You can see there's a huge difference from the way it used to look. Now, this was the brighter exposure. I also brought in the darker exposure as well. I'm going to go ahead and shut that mask off so you can see what that shot looked like. So basically, it's just the same thing as the last one, except a little bit darker. But when I add the masks and I have both of those layers turned on, you can see what a difference that makes in the label. Now, I wanted to have the letters kind of pop out a little bit, so I duplicated the darker exposure and then basically just made a mask for the letters. Now, this is just more of a creative touch. I thought it would look cool, and I thought it would make the brand stand out, and I really like the way it looks. So, just duplicating that layer and just adding a little bit of you know creative technique and cutting that out with the mask, I think really went a long way in making that label look a lot better. So, again, just three layers. I've got a bright exposure, a darker exposure, and then a layer for our letters. And that's pretty much the label. I think that looks pretty nice. Okay, so next up we have the neck of the bottle. Now if you remember from being on set, all I did was I changed the focus from the front of the bottle basically to the back. I wanted to make sure that it was nice and sharp on the top of the bottle. So let me zoom in to kind of show you what I'm talking about. I'm going to shut this edge light neck layer off. And if we look at it, you can see that it's a little bit soft. It's not terrible, but it could be better. So that's why we shifted focus and made sure that we got that area covered. Now I'm going to go ahead and turn this layer on just so you can see what it does. You can see it looks a lot sharper now and a lot better. Now this is just the edge light. I'm going to go ahead and shut off the layer mask just so you can see what it's doing. So again, it's just adding a little bit more focus on the top. I changed the blend mode to lighten again just so we could only see the light areas and then adding the mask I just painted in the, the light areas that I wanted to see. Now the next layer is pretty similar to that as well also changed it to lighten and let me go ahead and shut the layer mask off. You could see what the top of that neck looked like prior to me adding a layer mask and just painting the areas that I wanted to see. So when I do that it still has a really cool dramatic look and it gives that top of the bottle a lot more shape. Now the final layer for the bottleneck is just a little bit of detail right up on the top. And that little bit of detail goes a long way because it really helps you see the form and texture and shape of this bottle. So let me go ahead and shut all of the bottle layers off, or all the neck uh, layers off so you can see that. So huge difference. Okay, so next up we have the symmetry layer. And all that is is a merged copy of everything that we've done so far. And I made a little marquee selection and basically duplicated the left side and flipped it to the right. And what that did was allow us to have perfect symmetry. So I'm going to zoom in just so you can see what I'm talking about. Now, first off, let me explain the problem. When I look at the highlights, I think they look better on the left side than they do on the right. If you look on the right, you'll notice that some of the lines are kind of doubling up and they're just not very smooth. And it's nothing that we did on set. It's probably just the imperfections in the glass. And, you know, that happens sometimes. So in order to fix that, I just made a symmetry layer. I'm going to go ahead and turn that on. And you can see with that on, it's a mirror copy of the left side. And it looks a lot cleaner. So let me back out. I'm going to shut the symmetry layer off, and you can see what it looks like. It's a mirror copy. So we had a little bit of masking to do. Um, let me go ahead and turn that mask on just so you can see what's going on here. So I made sure that the label wasn't included in that mask. All I wanted was the bottle. 
So again, all I did was made a marquee selection. So press the letter M, make a marquee selection, and I'm just going to, I wanna find the center of this bottle and I wanna go over just a little bit more so I have some room to mask it out and blend it in. So I basically just made a copy of this left side, did a free transform, flipped it, and then you will see that we have the duplicate side over here. So this is what it looks like without the mask. So all I did was I created a mask where I use a soft brush, I blended it in through the center, and I have a selection that I made for the label specifically, and I just made sure that I didn't include that, so in the mask. So basically what we have is just a mirrored version of the left side, and that gives us perfect symmetry, and it looks a lot better. So that's what that layer is all about. It's all about symmetry. The next layer we have is just basically a cleanup layer. So I'm gonna zoom in and shut this off so you can see what these are. We had some, actually from our video lights, we had some ambient light coming through. It's not a huge deal, it's a, a pretty quick fix in Photoshop. Um, and then we've got these little particles. Because this has apple cider in it, you're gonna see some particles, but visually I don't think it looks good, so I went ahead and just removed those. So you'll see as I turn that layer on, they disappear. Same way with those reflections. As far as cleaning up the image, I used a couple of different tools. One of my favorite tools to use is the healing brush. And I like to use the spot healing brush in particular, set to content aware. And what I like about it is Adobe has created some really cool technology where it'll basically analyze your image and It'll, it's really good at cleaning up blemishes, uh, even for portrait work. It's, it's just a really great tool, and um, that's what I primarily used on it, but I also used just the regular heal healing brush tool. If I had some hard lines or something I needed to clean up, that's a good option. Now, the next layer is our label edge cleanup, and so let me zoom in. You'll notice that when we created that symmetry layer, we have a little bit of... Uh, little bit of weirdness going on here on the edge of this label. So all I did was basically cloned that out so I had a perfect label. And now it looks a lot better. So not a ton of cleanup work, but just a little bit. And that little bit goes a long way. So the next thing we have are a couple of adjustment layers. We've got a hue saturation layer, which pretty much just changes the color of the bottle. It's real subtle. Um, well, it's, it's not changing the color of the bottle, it's changing the color of the glow inside of the bottle. And it's a real subtle change. Um, I felt basically that it was just a little too red, like a red-orange for my liking, and I wanted to add just a little bit of yellow, so I shifted that just a tiny bit. So as you can see in the mask, it's literally just affecting the glow. It's not affecting, it's not affecting the label at all. And as far as the top goes, it's black anyway, so there's not gonna be any color shift. So, the mask is literally just affecting the glow of the bottle. That's all that is. Now the next layer is another curves layer. All I did was kind of bump up some of the midtones a little bit, and I added just a little bit of light at the top and the bottom of the label. But I didn't want to affect the label, so I again relied on the path that I had created and make sure that the um, curve did not affect the label at all. So again, that's what the mask looks like, and you can see that it adds just a little bit of light, and I like the way that looks. So overall, at this point, the bottle is looking really good. I like the way it looks. I could probably call this an almost finished image, but there's one thing that I wanted to do just to give it a little bit more shape and a little bit more form. Now, this is something I could have done on set with a light, but I like to do this in post-production because I feel that it gives me a lot more flexibility in the way the image looks. And this is a little technique that I've came up with over the years that I like to use quite a bit. So basically how this works is, um, well actually let me show you what it is first. I'm gonna add highlights digitally in post-production. So here's the left, here's the right, and there's the center. And you can see that there's quite a bit of a difference between having reflections and not having reflections. So in order to make this, it's actually pretty simple. All I'm gonna do is I've made a path for the bottle. So I'm gonna make sure that I've got a selection of that. I'm gonna create a new layer and I wanna select the gradient tool. So 
So let me get that. I want to make sure that I'm painting with white and I want to make sure that it's set to white to transparent. So now that I've got that little uh, selection going, I'm going to kind of start from the left and move over to the right. And you'll see that it gives us this nice little gradient on the side. I'm going to deselect. I'm going to use the move tool and I'm just going to move it over a little bit. Now, right now it doesn't look good, but what we're going to do is we're going to soften the edge a little bit. And one thing I like to do is I like to work with smart objects. So I'm going to right click on that layer, convert to smart object. And then I'm going to go to filter, blur, Gaussian blur. And I'm going to do this by taste. Every image is a little bit different. I don't want it to be so sharp that it looks fake and I don't want it to be so blurry that it looks just washed out. So I think right now I'm pretty happy with 38 or 31.8, so I'm going to stick with that. And there's our first highlight. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make a copy of that. So Command J, Control T to free transform. I'm going to right click and I'm going to flip horizontally. And then all I'm going to do is I'm going to move it over to the other side. So you can see that we've got a couple of reflections that look pretty good. The opacity is lowered just a little bit so we can make it look a little bit more realistic. And then I basically applied a mask right around the area of where the label is and I just toned it back a little bit so it would blend in and look a little bit more seamless. So now that I've showed you how to do that, I'm going to delete those layers because we don't need them. And for the center highlight, I pretty much did the same exact technique. The only difference is I used a marquee tool and I used the elliptical marquee tool and basically just dragged that out and filled it with white. So basically I just blurred that, lowered the opacity and placed it in the spot where I thought that specular highlight might show up. And again, looking at these reflections, I think they look pretty awesome and it's really cool to have that ability in post-production and you have the ability to change the reflection after the fact and move it around. So again, that's a technique that I came up with that I really like and I use it quite often. So the next thing we have is basically just a merged layer of all of the stuff that we've already done. So now I've got everything all on one layer. I duplicated the background layer again just to make sure we have a solid black layer. And all of the work that we've done, I've put into another group called Build. So if I need to get back to that and change anything later, I have that flexibility. So I made another merged copy and just filled in the bottom so we have a nicer reflection. And then I've created a contrast layer by using luminosity mask. And let me show you how that works. That's pretty cool. I'm going to go into channels. I'm going to load the selection of the RGB. So I'm going to command or control click on RGB and it's going to load the luminosity of that layer. And as I click the curves layer, I'm basically going to get a really detailed mask of just the highlights. So when I go into the curves layer, I'm just affecting the highlights and I can drag this curve up. And you can see that it's affecting the highlights. Now, to make the opposite of that, I make a duplicate. I invert the mask. So control I to invert, go back to the curves panel, reset it, and then just bring your shadows down a little bit. And then with the combination of these two layers, you can see that we're creating a really dynamic contrast. Now I'm going to go ahead and delete those since we've already made them. So you can see what that contrast layer looks like. And then finally, there was something that I missed while I was retouching, and sometimes this happens, you think you're done, and then you look at it again with fresh eyes, and you notice something that you missed. Now, it's not that big of a deal. All I did was add a couple of new layers, and I just thought that the neck needed a little bit more work right around this seam. So let me zoom in. I didn't like the way this looked. I thought it could be a little bit cleaner. So all I did was make a quick selection, and I used the clone tool and just kind of cleaned up that edge. So Again, that's pretty much it. I think this bottle shot looks really good and that's how I build it. All right, so hopefully that gives you an idea of what goes into producing a really cool standalone product shot. 
Now I think any company would love to have a product shot like this. They can use it for all kinds of things. They could use it as pack shots for packaging. They can use it for advertising. You can drop some copy next to it. There's a lot of companies that always need standalone product shots. Now this is just one type of product photography. You can actually create much larger composite images based on something like this as a starting point. And oftentimes I get hired to create really cool commercial images involving splash and powders and all kinds of different stuff. And really the, the creativity that you can put into product photography is pretty limitless. So while standalone product images are awesome to have, this client wanted to take this image to the next level. So I'm gonna show you a couple of composites that I've created, basically using some of the same techniques, but a little bit more in depth and a little bit more intricate. Now I'm not gonna go into depth as to how I created this image because it's way too much to talk about and we didn't really show it on set, but I do wanna give you a couple of examples of what this product can be and the kind of creativity that you could put into your product photography. So just like the image we created in the studio, combining multiple exposures, multiple lighting scenarios, I did the same thing, but we've included some other elements such as spices, cinnamon, apple, some sparks, and this image really pops because of that. Now, I've also made an alternate version where we've got some apples kind of flying toward the camera. So hopefully this just gives you an idea of the creativity and all of the different things that you can do with compositing and product photography. Now, I'm not gonna go into all the intricacies of producing an image like this right now, but I do like to share tips and tricks on fstoppers.com. So if you wanna learn more about product photography, feel free to follow me on fstoppers.com. And if you wanna be notified about any upcoming tutorials that I produce with fstoppers.com, be sure to click the link below and subscribe to the newsletter. Thanks so much, guys. I hope you learned a ton, and we'll see you next time.